Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I will show you how to use the QN Edit model to transfer a pose from a reference image to a portrait you want to edit. The success rate is very high, even with difficult poses. First, let's look at some results from the workflow I built. This is the pose we want to copy. Now I want this woman to take the same pose. And this is the final image. Let's put them side by side so you can clearly see the difference. Here are a few more examples. Alright, now let's move into Confluent and I will explain the workflow used in all these demos. This Confluent setup is hosted on Running Hub, which is a cloud GPU platform. If you want to learn more about it, you can check the link in the description. We all know that starting from QN Edit version 2509, we can use a post skeleton image as a reference for post transfer. In this prompt, I tell the QN Edit model to make the person in image 1 copy the exact post from image 2. Image 1 is the main image we want to edit, which is this one. Image 2 is the post skeleton image. This skeleton is generated using a DW post estimator. In this pose, the person is sitting on the ground with her arm crossed. This setup is basically the default configuration for the QN image edit model. I did not enable the detect face option. I do this on purpose because I do not want the face shape from the reference image to affect the final result. Now let's see what we get with this basic setup. As you can see, QN Edit did not fully copy the pose. The arms are correct and they are crossed, but the legs are wrong. She is not sitting on the ground. With a basic setup, simple pose transfers can work, but harder poses like this one usually fail. That is why we move on to the advanced settings. In this next group, I added two LoRa's. These LoRa's are available on Hugging Face. Before we continue, remember to support the author. You can like their work or donate through the Ko-Fi link. This LoRa allows you to use a realistic image as a post reference. The author also provides clear usage guidelines. Let's go through them. First, you should pair the Kevin Edit 2511 model with a 4-step lighting in LoRa. Set the LoRa strength to 0.7 for the best results. This LoRa needs two input images. One image is the main character you want to edit. The other image shows the pose you want to copy. You can also copy the prompt provided by the author. If you need extra details, you can add them at the end of the prompt. The author released two models. One is the base model and the other is the helper model. You must use them together. Here you can see that I loaded both LoRa's with a strength of 0.7. The author recommends using two input images. In my setup, I used three images. The actual one is the post skeleton image. I use it as image 3. Because of this, I slightly changed the prompt. Instead of copying the post from image 2 only, I also tell the model to use image 3. For image 2, I made a few changes. I painted the mask over the head because I do not want the hairstyle or face identity to affect the final image. We want to keep the face and hair from image 1. I also removed the background for the same reason. This is the final version of image 2 that I use as a post reference. In general, you should remove or blur anything that might affect consistency. For example, in this case, I also masked out the skateboard. If I do not do this, the skateboard may appear in the final image. Now let's check the result with these advanced settings. This time, the pose is correct. However, she is looking away from the camera. We want her to look at the viewer. No problem. We will fix this in the last group using face detailer. Before that, we need to choose which image to send to the final step. 
The post transfer gives us two result images. In the third group, I stitch them together with the two input images. You can see the labels at the top of the preview. In this case, we should choose image 2 because it has the correct pose. So in the image input switch node, I set the input value to 2. Now in the final group, I use face detailer to repaint the face. As you can see, she is now looking at the viewer. Face consistency is also improved because I added another LoRa. I explained this lore in my previous video about the head swap workflow. For the denoising strength in the face detailer node, I set it to 0.5. Do not go above 0.5. If you do, the lighting on the face may not match the rest of the image. That's it for this tutorial. If you want to support the channel, feel free to join our community. The link is in the description. And if this video helped you, consider subscribing. See you in the next video.